Hello and welcome back to the Tech Info Center. We are looking at a Samsung 22 inch monitor today. Uh, pretty much just a regular computer monitor. Um, 22 inch, like I said, made by Samsung. Um, we have a problem with when we turn it on, you get a power light and then you get a flickering. Everything's flickering on the uh, on the screen here. So this could be uh, multiple things. Um, could be a backlight problem. Could be a voltage issue. Um, so we're gonna take it apart and uh, see what we can find. Uh, I'm gonna I'm actually be turning off the camera while I disassemble just because I don't have a uh, big enough tripod for the camera here. But I'm gonna get this thing apart and we're gonna tear into it and figure out what's going on. Okay, so we got the uh, the monitor part. Um, I want to apologize and let you guys know that uh, as soon as I get a better camera and tripod here, we'll I'll I'll do the step by step details and we'll go through one of these again. Um, all the Samsung monitors are different. The HP monitors, pretty much, they all come apart somewhat the same, but there's little details that are different on all of them. So. Uh, some of them you, you have to pry them open. You got to be very careful. Use a pry tool um, and get them open and take everything apart before you can get to the circuit boards. But uh, in this video, I'm just going to show you. We had a flicking, uh, flickering image on the uh, monitor, and we wanted to get it apart and see what was going on. Um, what I'm holding in my hands here is the power supply board, which also uh, has the inverter part of the board on here. Uh, this is the part, this is the circuit area right here that controls the backlighting, um, which is one of the things that could possibly be causing uh, the flickering. Um, and then we have the main power supply here. And then this goes off to the main board, which creates the video signal uh, for your picture. So usually when we have issues with these monitors, it is in the power supply board. Now the inverter isn't always the same board. Uh, it's not always on the same board. Sometimes they have a separate board for the inverters. On most uh, larger TVs, it's that way. But in this one, um, what we have here is uh, the circuit for the backlighting and also for powering the board, uh, the main board for the picture. Um, so what I see already here, and I don't know if you can see in the picture, but um, this cap right here, capacitor, is slightly swollen, and these two here are swollen quite a bit. This one's actually uh, showing a little sign of leakage, and I apologize if my camera's not picking that up, but what you'll get is just a little bit of uh, like a brown color coming out of the top there. Uh, so this capacitor, these three here, um, so far, I, I think those are the only ones I see having a problem uh, on the circuit here. Um, these can cause a lot of problems when they're swelling or when they're blown. You can um, get a change in voltage, a drop in voltage. The voltage can be erratic, um, and it's a very common problem on power supplies. Uh, there's other things that we'll get into on other videos that are common failures on power supply boards, but caps, I have to say, capacitors are pretty much number one we're replacing them all the time and um, pretty easy to replace you know you just uh, are gonna go ahead and unsolder these uh, there are two two posts on each and make sure that you replace them with the exact same if you can um, readings you can always go higher voltage so for instance uh, these are uh, let's see what we got here 25 volt um, 820 microfarads so you want to stick with the microfarads or whatever the read the reading is on the um, the specs are on the capacitor uh, but the voltage I could go from this 25 volt I could go up to a 35 volt but I'm not going to go down to a 16 or a 10 um, higher is safer but never lower um, and you want to stay correct with the microfarads or nanofarads or whatever your your uh, specs are um, and you can get most of these. I mean, I order them in bulk on eBay and places like that. So uh, we're going to go ahead and replace these three capacitors. And I'm going to shut off the video and do that real quick. I'm going to take these out. And I'll, I'm actually going to make a, uh, a soldering video for you guys, just basic, so that that can show you how I replace these. Um, so I don't have to do it on every single video. 
But I'm pretty much gonna unsolder all three of these, replace them with the same exact ones, but with a higher grade. I like to use uh, Rubicon capacitors. And I'm gonna go ahead and replace these and come back on here, show you what I did, and then we'll put this thing back together. Okay, so uh, I got these three capacitors replaced. They're uh, nice and flat, nice Rubicon brand capacitors. These ones never let me down. Um, if you can see, this is one of the ones that was uh, swollen. I don't know if you can see that it comes up out of here. They need to be completely flat and a little recessed even on some of them. Um, but this one was obviously swelled up and you got three in the same circuit swelled up. You're going to have uh, problems. So anyway, went ahead and replaced these three. Everything else seems good on the board. So we're going to... Uh, Put this back into uh, its place and put the monitor back together and okay, see how so things go. So we've got this thing back together. Um, scoot out a little bit for you so you can see. Um, got this, got it back together. Um, went together pretty good. Uh, so now we're old. we're gonna turn it on and see uh, what we're looking at here. Hit the button. And looks like our flickering is gone. So that's good news. So I know this video um, was kind of short and we didn't go through taking everything apart. But I hope that this video helps you in troubleshooting and diagnosing um, a TV or a monitor. Um, and what to look for in bad capacitors. And I hope this video helped you um, or could help somebody. And please uh, rate comment and subscribe and I will be posting more videos that are more in depth and try to make videos that will help you guys uh, fix your own stuff or uh, understand this better so alright thank you